Hey everybody, thanks for joining us for He Talks Hard, uh, the Boxing Beekeeper here, and I'm here with Arnold Knight, uh, who runs the Uncle Arnie's Apiary page on Facebook. Uh, so go check that out and like it. Um, hey, Arnold, how long have you been keeping bees? Um, probably about four or five years. Okay. You know, it's always been a thought, probably a whole year on learning how to do it before I actually did it. That's the important clue, you know, because you just don't want to get a hive and not know what you're doing. So it's a lot of money involved in this. It's, it's, it's a dirty and expensive habit. Um, yeah, the, the beginner's classes are, are so important. Um, what made you choose bees? You know, I don't have an answer for that. I really don't. You know, maybe it's a secluded hobby. I don't know. Um, I do, I'm just like an oddball really, because <laughs> not only do I do bees, I also gold prospect, you know, and that's not a, a common thing either, <laughs> you know, so uh, it was just something I just happened to, maybe an internet crawl up, you know, the random pages you get on Facebook or something like that, mm -hmm. and it was maybe something like that, and I'm just like, you know, maybe, well, let me look into that a little more, and I got more and more interested, and next thing I know is I'm buying books, and I'm really excited on reading these books, and I'm like, I want to do this. So, you know, after I started buying the simple stuff, and I've had a lot of failures, a lot of failures. Here, here. And at every failure, you learn, and you get better and better. And, you know, one of the best things about failing is you can teach others about your failure. And it's all about the bees. You know, so now I'm a huge advocate of bees. Uh, if we don't have bees, then you don't have a grocery store. You know, your store is empty. So, yeah. Uh, so we're down in Old Orchard and I'm noticing and that there's just tons of forage. Um, you don't have to get very far out of the city center. Um, before you start seeing native plants, fields, um, wooded areas, um, everybody has a garden. My wife actually buys wildflower seeds, and off season she'll be walking the dogs through the fields, spreading the seeds. <laughs> you know, this is this place right here is utopia. It has everything. It has a little pond down on the far end of the field. It has all kinds of wildflower. You know, it creates my honey to be red at the end of the year, and that's really, really good honey. It almost has like a tangy pepper taste to it, too. Huh. Oh, it's beautiful honey. I love it. <laughs> so We're going to have to figure out uh, what's growing here that, that makes the honey red. Um, so I'm, I'm a little behind. Any advice for... Uh, the problem I've been having is getting my bees through the winter. That's sort of my focus this year is um, how I'm going to prep them and get them ready for the winter. Okay. Um, I failed. I've done quilt boxes and I have done many different varieties. The thing that works for me where all my hives survived was to minimize their space, give them the room. You know, you don't want them to swarm or anything, but it, you know, you want to do this in maybe October. If you have a deep on the bottom for the brood, which is probably by October going to be empty mm -hmm. because she's not laying anymore, and then you have a deep on top that has full of honey, that right there alone should be fine for them in the winter, but they're still going to work on the good days in, in October and November, so they can always fill up the brood area. Um, then you just wrap it in tar paper and that's all you need you know I don't do the quilts or anything in that and on the top feeders i've discovered i kind of i don't know if other people do this but i didn't learn this from anybody i kind of made it up and it works great that a knee high fill it up with rice tie it off and just throw it on the top of your feeder and that will the rice will absorb any condensation it comes in contact with because condensation will kill your bees during the winter time mm -hmm. because it will collect and drip down on your hive. And then of course, tilt your hive to keep the condensation that does arrive um, away from your bees, the cluster. Other than that, 
That's the first time I've heard that trick about sort of leaning it forward. Oh yeah, so I lean it in. as much as I can without it actually tipping over. Okay. You know, I, the back, I, I like to lean it towards the front entrance. Um, I guess it really doesn't matter, um, but the front entrance would be the better for it to, to drain away. Um, probably a good inch at least, and an inch is quite, a, quite significant when you're looking at the tilt. So yeah, and that's, that's worked for me. You know, just a simple tar paper, because the sun will hit the tar paper, and that will give you any of the heat. Because cold will not kill the bees, the condensation will, and hunger, and of course your mites. Yeah. So get rid of all them. Um, treat treat them in October. Once your honey, once the human honey is off your hive, and that's home and in a bottle or whatever, then you can come back and treat treat your hives with you know acid, oxy, is oxycetylene, no, whatever that acid. Oxalic. Oxalic acid, yes. Um, treat it with oxalic acid and just you know winter cleanup. That works best for me. And the beauty about it is all this is all natural. You know, it's not that stuff. The honey that we get, you and I, as beekeepers, you know, I never realized this before, but if you go to a shopping, shopping table or any supermarket and look at this honey that is bottled in New York, but it was harvested in Indonesia, and I mean, you do some internet searches on that, and it's crazy what you learn, and you'll never touch it again. <laughs> Where it goes into a red bottle from Indonesia, goes to Kuwait, goes into a blue bottle, and just to get rid of the tariffs, you know, and the taxes, it's like, and it's not even really honey. There, there's a, an episode on Netflix uh, of a series called Rotten, and the first episode is on um, the honey industry and how you know, a great deal of the honey is cut with um, corn syrup. Oh yeah, and corn syrup kills your honeybees. So stay away from your starch. So yeah, and not to mention, did you know that if you take real honey and you drop it on a, on a plate, uh, you know how people go pan yeah. with the water that swirls around? A drop of honey and you swirl it around with a little water, you'll see a honeycomb, because honey actually has the genetic memory of its comb. That's a great trick. Try it out sometime. i do that when I get home. <laughs> yep, try it out. If it's real honey, you'll see a honeycomb appear in that drop of honey that you put down there. That's amazing. Yeah, it's all on my site, and you know, I put all that interesting crap on there. So, yeah. Well, thanks for having us down. And again, everybody, if you could go over to Uncle Arnie's Apiary, um, check it out and hit that like button. Nice to meet you all. <laughs>